Right, welcome to the Invivo Repair Centre. Uh, if you're watching this video, it sounds like, um, well, this video is intended for people that have carried out the uh, connector replacement for the docking connector or done the charge upgrade and the dock's not working. Now, um, it does happen occasionally. It could be that there's an alternative fault on the dock which is stopping it from working, or it could be that there's a, um, a particular cause. Um, I'm just going to quickly run through what to do if, if you put it back together and the thing doesn't work. Okay. So, um, there is one major cause of this problem. Uh, if I just take the connector out, the, uh, the adapter out, we're going to remove this metal grill, and to do that, you need something that's not going to damage the grill, but something which can engage in the little holes in the side. And you can see, I've, what I've got here is just a pair of very fine nose pliers, and I'm just going to put the end of the pliers in into the uh, holes in the grill. I see that. Can you see that, Tom? You can leave that out, and do the same at the other end. Mark the grill. Make a hold of it with your fingers. And there she blows. Comes out nicely. Just give it a little bit of a rock. Gently. And that's the grill removed. And then you can see underneath we've got the speakers. Now um, here's the reason for some docks not working. Uh, I'll tilt this up so you can see this in the light. This is a ribbon cable, and if you've done the repair already, you'll be familiar with ribbon cables. And actually on this dock you can see that the ribbon cable comes, this, this cable carries all the power and the signals up to the top half for the speakers and the amp, this is the amplifier. And it plugs into the digital sound processor down here. And I don't know if you can get in there with the camera. You can see there's a, a ribbon connector standing up vertically on the board and this ribbon goes down, round and in and into that socket there. And you can see actually on this dock that is not fully engaged in the socket. And you might find that if you've been a bit rough with it, uh, when you undid the four screws on the base, sometimes that ribbon cable can come out. So simply disconnect the power. Um, and I guess I will show you how to change, to put that ribbon back in on a separate repair video. Okay, so um, your ribbons come out. Uh, this, is, this is the other half of the diagnostic video where this is the repair section that you've um, asked us for. And what we're going to do is to put this ribbon back in to the sound process board because it has come out. Um, very common cause. Uh, so what we're going to do is first of all we're going to put the dock flat on the desk and undo these four screws that hold the amplifier in place to get the ribbon cable out. And sometimes when they're made, these docks, the, um, that little ribbon cable is, is put it back in a little bit too short. And when it's too short, obviously, it's more likely to become unplugged, uh, causing you a problem. So when we put this back together, what we're going to do is feed a little more of that ribbon cable out through that gap where it's clamped between the amplifier case and the dock case, or the amplifier heat sink and the dock case, we're going to feed out another two or three millimeters just to give it a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more, more leeway in, in uh, so it doesn't come unplugged. And you'll notice, I mean, your dock, a lot of people say, oh, my dock's got a loose base part. But actually, this part here is sprung loaded. It's, it's on rubber push buttons which uh, isolate this from the other half of the dock. When you've got this thing pumping out 30 watts, the body of the dock is vibrating quite a lot actually from the sound, especially the bass. And the idea of that is to, to leave the, stop the electronics being shaped into bits inside the unit. So some delicate electronics in there. So that's intentional. Unfortunately, that play there can sometimes result in uh, the ribbon coming out. Um, so here's the amplifier. We're just going to lift the amplifier free. You can see it pops out. You can't lift it all the way out because there's this short ribbon cable here, which is the remote control. This is the remote control sensor. That's the data, digital data for the remote control. Lift out the unit frontwise, and you can see here's the ribbon. And just lift your ribbon out, feed it through. Don't pull it too far, but you can see it's quite long. And what you can do, just to stop everything just dropping out, is just pop a screw back in 
just to hold the thing together while you do the second half of this operation, which I'm going to show you. All right? So that's not going to drop out and do anything nasty. You don't want to create any more trouble than you're already in, do you really? So anyway, so here we go. Now we've got to remove these four screws, and I'll show you before on the video. Clamp it between your knees and squeeze, and it makes life a lot easier. Also good for your thigh muscles. There we go. Two, three, four. Now, if your ribbon did come out, what might have happened before is that you undid those screws a little bit too far. So I lift off the cover behind the sign processor. This little thing here is the sound processor. And if you need to send it to us to have this connector changed, also this is a procedure you would use to unplug the sound, to remove the sound processor. Now if I pull, you can see it's come away, and there we are. And that would be on yours, would be unplugged like that. And in fact, this one wasn't fully plugged in. So you've got the sound processor. There are four, as a, these are the four rubber push uh, mounts which cushion the two halves of the dock. They do ha have a habit of falling off, so be careful, you know, you know drop it on the floors. Make sure when you put it back together, actually four, four came out and four went back in again. So hold the unit like this. Get hold of the ribbon cable. And Plug it all the way in. You can see that's gone back in further than it was originally, and it's in there now. And the name of the game is to get this thing back together without putting any strain or pulling on that ribbon to make the ribbon cable fall out. Okay, so drop the whole assembly back down into its positions. Just the same again. You can see the four push drives have dropped back in. This ribbon is folded back underneath the audio processor. And you can see the ribbon at the moment, if I just hold it from underneath so it doesn't fall out, you can see the ribbon goes all the way in. Now, the name of the game now is to secure the base back on and then to feed this ribbon back underneath the amplifier, but not make it too tight, not make it so tight that it's likely to come out again and cause problems. So, back between the knees and squeeze. Hit on. And uh, oh, magnetic screwdriver. Might be worth at this stage just putting a couple of screws in, just in case it pops out and you have to come back around here and undo all four. So just two to hold it in position between the knees. Detaining. Right, now you can hand it quite safely. Back onto the desk, and there we have. So I'm going to take out this screw we put in, sorry. Giving the cameraman a hard time here. <laughs> um, take the screw out that we put in before. Gently lift the amplifier. And then feed this ribbon back inside. Put the entrails back. Okay, now if I um, clamp it down where it was before, you can see that is a little bit tight. I don't know if you can see that actually, but you can see that the path that the ribbon's taking down to the connector is um, a diagonal path, which means really that it's only just in there. Can you see that? Okay. So what I'm going to do is just gently lift the amplifier up again. Obviously mind the speakers because, you know, you can make holes in them. And just hold that back. To, to make that a little bit longer. I'm going to do that again because that wasn't, wasn't really quite long enough. So we're going to feed you know, a couple of millimetres of, of ribbons back through. There we go. To give it a little bit more flexibility. It's only a millimetre or two, but it makes a difference. Uh, and then put the amplifier screws back in to hold the amplifier in position. tight these screws, the body of the dock is actually polycarbonate plastic which is quite tough stuff and um, sometimes it's worth just trying to move the screw to find the old thread. If you start, I was going to say, if you start screwing straight away 
you might end up having to cut a new thread if you don't engage in the thread that was there when you took the screw out. And careful if you don't, don't over tighten them, if you're using a power driver or something like that, the head of the screw can snap off. So you definitely want to do it with a little bit of feeling. You see this one's gone back into its old thread, look and it's very easy. Make sure they're all screwed down. If you get an air leak on these docks, it will, it will affect the base. And also you'll hear rushing gas, like it will whistle at you if um, the air is squeezing through a small gap or is, you know, um, it's not sealed properly, it will affect the performance. So you want to make sure all the screws go back in properly. Screws back in the base again. And there you have it, that's the, uh, that's the ribbon cable plugged back in, it's fully engaged now. And if I pull this down slightly you can see that it's further in than it was before. And it doesn't have to be fully unplugged to give you trouble, that's the point. The point is that if it's not fully home, some of the contacts might not be making contact and uh, affecting the performance, stopping it working completely. And then when you put the, uh, the cover back on, just note that there's a cutout along one edge. So this is full, this is a fully um, return on this flange here, whereas this side has got a cutout, and that cutout is to account for where the amplifier goes. So you know you just get hold of it, use your thumbs, push it back in. And that's how you re-engage the digital sound processor cable.